Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The mass extinction at the end of the Permian was one of the worst disasters to ever occur in the history of life on Earth. Due to intense volcanism and the release of tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide from the Siberian traps, global temperatures rose by several degrees, with the ocean suffering significant acidification. Up to 70% of all terrestrial species died out as a result. While the situation in the global seas of Panthalassa was even worse, with up to 81% of all marine species going extinct. The main victims of this extinction event were the terrestrial therapsid proto-mammals, which were hit very hard by the Great Dying. Although previously the dominant large vertebrate group, only two major lineages, the bulky herbivorous dicynodonts and the smaller adaptable cynodonts, would persist into the Triassic for any great length of time. With therapsid diversity decimated, the previously small and marginal neodiapsid sauropsid reptiles would step into the limelight, rapidly diversifying into a dizzying array of often bizarre and novel forms. This would apply just as much to marine life as it did to terrestrial ecosystems, with the great dying opening up many aquatic niches that would be exploited by enterprising reptiles. Examples would include the somewhat cetacean-like Ichthyosauromorpha, the odd-nosed Thalatosauria, and the main subject of this video, the incredibly diverse Sauropterygians. Much like the turtles, all three of these marine reptile lineages have proven very difficult to classify, and their relationship to other reptiles is poorly understood. It has been suggested, particularly in recent years, that all three may be close relatives of each other, being placed quite near the base of Archelosauria. This would fit well with theories that Sauropterygians were close to turtles, and as such probably originated during the Permian. The Sauropterygians proper first appear in the fossil record quite suddenly, about 251 million years ago during the early Triassic. The most basal members of this clade were relatively small and lizard-like animals that were only moderately adapted to a marine existence, dwelling in warm coastal regions adjacent to shallow tropical seas. The clade is united by the possession of significant modifications of the pectoral girdle that enabled powerful downstrokes while swimming. Exactly which early marine reptiles were members of Sauropterygia is still up for debate, with two poorly understood families, the Saurosphargids and the Helveticosaurids, sometimes being placed here. The former were superficially turtle-like animals that were native to the early Triassic of Europe and China, with wide bodies fairly long tails and paddle-like feet. The Sauros also possessed dermal armour and expanded ribs, making them strongly resemble both turtles and the later derived placodonts. Although they seem to have evolved these features separately, the Helveticosaurids were equally unusual, with the small Eusauros Fargus from the Middle Triassic of Italy resembling the basal members of Pantestudinata, such as Papakelis being a terrestrial reptile that would have looked like a wide-bodied lizard. Its probable closest relative, Helveticosaurus, was notably larger, potentially measuring up to 3.6 or 12 feet long, and was a truly bizarre genus. Native to the Middle Triassic of Switzerland, this barrel-bodied reptile possessed adaptations for both paddling and sculling by utilising a powerful tail as well as an oddly short and blunt skull equipped with sharp pointed teeth. The purpose of this feature is not certain, as most carnivorous Triassic marine reptiles had elongated snouts for snapping at prey. It is possible that Helveticosaurus lived somewhat like a seal, being capable of coming onto land to breed and rest, while utilising its short snout to poke into underwater crevices in search of marine invertebrates. Phylogenetic studies have often placed this genus, as well as Eusaurus fargus, as sister to Sauropterygia, suggesting that this clade evolved from semi-aquatic lizard-like animals that inhabited shallow coastal seas. This idea was confirmed by the description of the unique and bizarre genus Atopodentatus from the early Triassic of China, roughly 6 million years after the end Permian mass extinction. Measuring about 2.7 metres, or 9 feet long, this semi-aquatic reptile possessed a shortened neck, elongated torso, and a hammer-shaped skull equipped with small chisel-like teeth. This suggests that this genus was a herbivore that fed on algae growing on the shallow seafloor, living somewhat like an oversized modern marine iguana, and cropping vegetation with its shovel-like mouth. 
This makes Atopodentatus the oldest known marine herbivorous reptile, with this sort of ecological niche being very rare among sauropsids, and demonstrates the sheer adaptiveness of life in the wake of the worst mass extinction in the history of life on Earth. It is currently the most basal known definitive member of Sauropterygia, being followed in most phylogenetic trees by the Placodontiforms, a successful lineage that are famous for their flat, crushing dentition, adapted for feeding on tough-shelled mollusks. At the time of this video's production, the most basal member of Placodontiforms is the small Palatodonta from the early Triassic of the Netherlands. Resembling a stocky lizard with large eyes and a short neck, this animal represents a transitional stage between the more basal sauropsids and the later Placodonts. Like the latter, Palatodonta possessed teeth on the palate, but these were slender and pointed, much like those of less specialised reptiles. This suggests that the genus fed on soft-bodied prey, with this type of niche probably being ancestral for Placodontiforms as a whole. Within Placodontia itself, the earliest forms, like Placodus, which lived in the early to middle Triassic, resembled barrel-bodied lizards, superficially similar to the marine iguana of today, but larger at up to two metres long. In the earliest Triassic, their size was probably enough to deter predators such as sharks, with basal placodonts being somewhat like reptilian walruses, diving down to the seabed and foraging for hard-shelled prey. However, as large carnivorous marine reptiles developed and became more common as the Triassic progressed, placodonts responded by developing dense dermal armour to protect themselves. The clade Siamontoidia in particular evolved into superficially turtle-like animals and are distinguished by their wide shells composed of osteoderms. Most members of this group had teeth that grew only on the palate at the roof of the mouth. Forms such as Siamodus were fairly typical, being superficially turtle-like armoured animals with round crushing teeth. This genus was native to Europe and China during the mid to late Triassic, measuring up to 1.5 metres or 4.9 feet long. The shell was a two-part carapace on the upper surface of the body. The larger half covered Siamodus from the neck to the hips and spread out widely, almost encompassing the limbs. The second, smaller plate covered the hips and the base of the tail. The heavy shell enabled this animal to sink down to the sandy seafloor, where it would hoover up hard-shelled prey to be crushed by its specialised powerful teeth and jaws. Other Siamodontoids were generally very similar, the genus Vesoderma being the largest member of the clade at up to 1.8 metres long. The closely related Placocellus was even more turtle-like, with a single shell covering most of the body, with the animal possessing a shorter tail than many other placodonts. The feet were flat and flipper-like, although unlike modern sea turtles, it still retained discernible toes in life. Meanwhile, the flat-shelled Henodus was among the most unusual placodonts, as its remains were found in deposits that were non-marine in nature, suggesting that the genus inhabited brackish or freshwater lagoons. Also unusually, it has been found that Henodus was probably a filter-feeding herbivore that sifted food through the baleen-like denticles along the beak jaws. Despite their success, the placodonts died out during the extinction event at the end of the Triassic, along with many other lineages of bizarre and specialised Triassic reptiles. The final and most successful clade of Sauropterygians were the Eosauropterygians, which first appeared in the fossil record roughly 251 million years ago. These were ancestrally small and lizard-like animals, but would later diversify into the incredibly derived and successful plesiosaurs and their relatives. The most basal members of this lineage were the Pachypleurosaurs, which were slender, small-headed forms with long necks, paddle-like limbs and deep tails. Ranging between 20 centimetres and 1 metre in length, Pachypleurosaurs possessed highly reduced limb girdles, which means that they probably spent almost their entire lives in the ocean. Incredibly detailed fossil remains of the Chinese genus Caechosaurus suggest that these animals gave birth to live young, a trait that would be retained by the more derived plesiosaurs. The teeth were needle-like and pointed, which implies a diet composed of small, slippery fish. Pachypleurosaurs were native to what is now Eurasia from the early to middle Triassic and probably died out due to competition from their more derived relatives, the Nothosaurs. These were larger animals that averaged about 3 metres or 10 feet long 
and would have been somewhat transitional forms between more basal sauropterygians that swam using lateral undulations of the body and the strong flipper-powered locomotion of plesiosaurs. Nothosaurs would have been the Triassic equivalent of seals and sea lions, diving beneath the waves in search of fish and cephalopods. While most members of the group fed on relatively soft-bodied prey, the distinctive genus Simosaurus from the Middle Triassic of Central Europe possessed blunt, crushing teeth, which suggest a diet of ammonites and larger fish. Aside from this genus, all other nothosaurs are members of the family Nothosauridae. By far the best known and successful of these was the type genus Nothosaurus itself. Native to Eurasia and North Africa between 240 and 210 million years ago, this animal possessed an elongated neck, flattened skull, and snapping jaws lined with sharp conical teeth. The genus averaged about 4 metres or 13 feet long, and swam using its paddle-like feet and rudder-like tail to propel itself forward. Nearly a dozen species are known, some of which grew to pretty large sizes, with N. giganteus reaching up to 7 metres or 23 feet long. It is currently unknown as to when nothosaurs died out, but the group were probable victims of the N. Triassic extinction event with competition from their more derived cousins, the plesiosaurs, also possibly being a contributing factor. The ancestors of the plesiosaurs first originated during the early Triassic and belonged to the clade Pistosauroidea. These animals were rare during the Triassic, with only a handful of decent fossils being attributed to the group. Perhaps the most important of these was Pistosaurus itself, from the Middle Triassic of France and Germany. Measuring about three meters long, this genus would have resembled Nothosaurus in many respects, but also possessed a stiff vertebral column, which suggested it relied on its flippered limbs to power itself through the water. Its skull was quite small and resembled that of plesiosaurs, although its teeth and palate were more similar to those of Nothosaurids. It is also very probable that Pistosaurus had developed endothermic metabolisms and inhabited the open ocean, unlike their more basal relatives that preferred coastal environments. Other genera such as Augustosaurus and Bobosaurus were similar, and it is from forms such as these that the first true plesiosaurs arose near the end of the Triassic, and would go on to tremendous success during the following Jurassic period. However, this group is enormous and highly diverse, and definitely requires a video all of its own. In conclusion then, Despite their incredible diversity during the rebound from the Great Dying, marine reptiles would go through another trying time at the end of the Triassic. Aside from the ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, all of the other strange and novel ocean-going reptiles would die out, perhaps being victims of their own specialization. Thanks for watching everyone. The next video will be covering the evolution of lagomorphs, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.